Kendrin, Jason, welcome back to the show. You look like you're dressed and you're ready for the topic we're about to talk about. Exactly. I thought like we'd you know change it up for this episode and uh, you know support my favorite team, Liverpool, um, with respect to the topic that we're going to talk about, which is about sports. Yes, sports. So, you know, somebody who's watching may think, why are we talking about sports when this is AWS for data, data strategy unravel? Well, analytics has playing a big is playing a big part now in sports, especially as the sports economy grows around the world and the world becomes more global. So there are more viewers, which means more tickets, which means more revenue, which means more technology as well, and a much higher uh, competitive pressure for teams and for broadcasters and for advertisers, really to up their game and take things to the next level. So what trends are you seeing when it comes to the intersection of data analytics and sports? Yeah, so if you think about sports, you know, historically, there's always been a precedent to understand the viewership, the, the, the consumers of the sports. But the prevalence of the global economy means that sports organizations and leagues need to participate in the economy by partnering with advertisers, partnering with the venues. And a lot of that is powered by technology. So we're seeing very much this advent of cloud technology and data analytics powering the way in which sports can reinvent themselves, not just from a marketing and an experience angle, but also from a monetization angle as well. Um, but also really protecting the players themselves. If you think about what's happened in the past 20 years, particularly with a lot of health issues um, that has been come, in, come up in professional sports, um, there is a duty of care for these sports organizations, associations to use data to inform how they can better protect their players, to make sure that it is a very fun um, sport to be able to witness, but also a very fun sport to play for those who are participating. So this is very important, protecting the players and ensuring longevity, ensuring that we're maximizing the care and reducing the risk, which is inherent in, in any sport. Um, what about the trends when it comes to broadcasters, advertisers, partners, the leagues themselves? Hmm. Yeah, I think there's across the board there, right? When are thinking about the leagues, and especially in the U.S. with the NBA, analytics has come a big part on how they are acquiring players, right? It's not necessarily about how many points it's going, but it's more about their plus minus differential, right? And so it's kind of like how efficient is this player? Um, and so that's becoming a, a big factor into if they want to acquire this player or trade this player, et cetera. Um, and then the same thing for like NFL and, you know, baseball, et cetera. You know, baseball analytics has always been a, a big thing there. Yeah. So it's money ball, right? Yeah, it's, it's money ball, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think um, that's just one aspect in how leagues are starting to think about how do they run their organization? How do they acquire different players? Uh, but then looking at, you know, from the broadcaster standpoint, right? They're utilizing analytics almost in real time uh, as they're broadcasting these different games, right? With NFL, um, they're getting these analytics in real time uh, to talk about, hey, this team, you know, when it's third and one, they go for it, you know, every 40% of the time. Um, and so I think it's really becoming more embedded into the day-to-day -day in sports watching um, and, and within each and every lean that is there, right? And then also on the broadcasting side from uh, advertising, right? Uh, understanding, you know, how many people are watching this team versus that team, you know, what days they're watching, et cetera. Um, and using that to understand where to place their ads, right, and how to how to actually target certain customers that they're looking to get to. So, I mean, that's a lot of different use cases here. It, it right. looks like it's layered. So, uh, first we have actually capturing more metrics than before, right? Mm -hmm. And that's useful for the leagues to get more stats for players, but also useful for the broadcasters to find the right place to put their ads. Mm -hmm. So we've got the data capture now. Now that we have more data, we can also help it with the scouting and with the talent recruitment so that we can refine our KPIs. So the plus minus differ differential you mentioned mm -hmm. is a more holistic measure, let's say, of a basketball player's worth in the NBA, which yeah. helps to make better draft decisions in the future. But also what the decision itself that needs to be made with the better KPI can also be informed by analytics. So we've got the capturing, the improvement of the metrics, and the improvement of the decision itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly. really, it can really be impactful for yeah. the whole ecosystem because each of these is a huge layer of value by itself. Yeah. Yeah. Sports organizations, fundamentally, organizations that need to generate revenue, generate business outcomes. And there's always a need to attract the right talent, but there's so many sports that are out there. In the United States, you know, you've got 
four big sports, but there is a myriad of sports underneath, and you're all vying for the same population to be able to become athletes. So I think it's really important that these organizations use the data to be able to educate how sports can be more accessible, how you can aspire to be the next Ronaldo or the next Messi. The knock-on effect of that, the downstream effect of that, is that sports will become even more competitive than it is now. So how are current teams using data anal and analytics to gain a competitive edge? Yeah, I think I've talked about, about it a little bit already with the, the plus minus differential, but it's then also, you know, if you're scouting a different team, yeah. understanding what are some of their tendencies, right? You know, if you're in the NFL, you can understand, you know, how often they run this play versus that play. Um, and, you know, can kind of do the same with, depending on the sport that you're in. And so utilizing that, you can kind of uh, interpret or, 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 you know, predict what is the next thing that's coming that the, the, the opponent may try to do, right, and be able to stop that. Um, so I, guess, I think that's one of the ways that they're gaining those competitive advantages there. But um, the other aspect is, um, and going back to kind of your previous question, is because of these analytics, because of the data they're acquiring, it's ultimately allowing these teams to be more profitable, right, right? and growing the overall business value, right? Um, because if you think about just seeing the NFL alone, how much these teams they are selling for, right? Yeah. Billions of dollars when, you know, 20 years ago, it was just a few hundred million, yeah. right? Um, and so uh, the lucrative aspect of that has, has definitely changed because of some analytics and things that are happening there as well. Is there a place for simulations and predictive analytics, for example, that you mentioned gathering uh, information about your competitors and their tendencies? Mm -hmm. Say you have a coach who has a certain way of doing things for the last 10 years, for example, would it be possible for you to use that historical data to predict what's going to happen uh, or at least a ballpark of what could happen in the next match or in the next decision he's going to make or who or, or what athlete's going to come on the field? That type of thing? Yeah, I think there are two aspects to that. You know, you mentioned the fantasy football. I think that has exploded in the last few years, right? And that's essentially all around data. Right, understanding how these different players are going to perform to give your team the overall outcome. Um, but then the other aspect of that is, you know, how are they getting that competitive advantage? How are they doing the simulations? A lot of times where previously, you know, if a team or player would watch film, they would see, okay, there's these certain tendencies that this team has, and they're going to do this when they do that. It's now having the data to actually back that up. Right. To see, to see that, okay, I'm thinking that this is going to happen. Instead of having just a gut feeling, they now can look at the data and say, yeah, I was right. This is what's going to happen here almost all the time yeah. when X, Y, Z happens, right? Um, so there's there's a myriad of different things that are coming from the actual data that is being gathered. So I want to double click on that a little bit uh, about the depth of analysis that we can reach because you mentioned Formula One. Now, I think motorsport is leading the way in terms of uh, analytics because Telematics are quite advanced now, and you can get all of the data that you want that, that is relevant to the performance of a car. And we've had car simulations for years and racing simulators for years. Now, how can we extrapolate that to other sports that, are, that don't have as much data collection and learn from the lessons we had and the insights that we've gotten from motorsport and extend that to other sports? Yeah, I think um, you know having the wearables on athletes uh, I think we're starting to do that in certain areas. Uh, you know, some of these sports you can see the athletes wearing wearables, et cetera. Um, you know, any little thing can kind of change the outcome of what the athlete is doing, right? For example, if you're in golf, um, your swing, any little change in your swing, using wrist change, et cetera, can cause the shot to go further right from the left as opposed to the direct hit that you're trying to do there, right? Um, Say so they, you know, baseball, football, whatever it may be. So having the ability to understand, you know, in these certain situations, you tend to do this and this causes this outcome, right? And so how can you better predict that and understand what can I do to prevent that to have a better outcome overall, right? So having those wearables there, and you can kind of see, you know, with the different watches and rings, et cetera, that are now being provided to not just athletes, but to the normal consumer, um, they have all the analytics right there on their phone, essentially now, right? So we're tracking them throughout the day, understanding what their heart rate is, how many steps they took, you know, what their blood pressure is, et cetera, um, you know, how they're sleeping. And so being able to take all of that information and understand how overall are they performing 
um, not in a athletic venue or you know on the field, but just in their day to day, right? Yeah. You know, if they're stressed, if they're sad, et cetera. Um, so I think we're starting to see more of a trickle down from you know top tier athletes down to those everyday consumers. So how are advertisers and partners actually benefiting from data analytics? I mean, you gave a couple of examples now, but what else can they be doing to maximize profit, improve fan experience, improve customer experience? Yeah, I was going to say, I think one of the biggest ways is just ad targeting, right? Uh, so being able to understand what type of consumers are consuming this sport, you know, what is their typical um, times that they're watching, et cetera, and uh, having other um, aspects in there. And then being able to do some data partnering with these leagues as well as the broadcasters as well as these different entities that we talk about within this overall ecosystem gives them a complete view of uh, what are some of the people that might be watching, et cetera, and how they can utilize that information to you know provide targeted ads. Would that extend also to providing bespoke offers for attending live events like yeah. flight plus hotel plus events plus access to VIP areas of the stadium plus snacks? Yeah. Plus everything that's personal about this person that, that would make them engage with the sport at the highest level? Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting question around advertising. The advertising space has always been quite um, linear. You know, yeah. you, advertisers know what ad spots they need to target. There's technology platforms such as um, demand side platforms. So advertisers can bid, you know, they put in their, their amount and then it automatically pop up. Yeah. The, the reality is that the channels in which fans are actually seeing the sports is changed. Yeah. You know, it's no longer about viewing it at the broadcast level, you know, you're watching it on your favorite channel. It's on social media. It's sometimes you're viewing it on the street. So advertisers need to start to think about how they can leverage different channels and that requires lots of data. Yeah. But it also requires data that sometimes you can't access on the fly. And one thing that is really important in sports is the idea of edge computing, the ability for you to process information even though you don't have an online connection. We talked a lot about wearable technology. Sometimes our watches, you know, the one that we're wearing now, is not connected to the internet. Yeah. But how do you relay that data and analytics to the individual without being connected? And I think the advent of cloud technology and edge computing allows these organizations, these advertisers, to actually provide the same offer on your watch or on your phone, even though you're not connected. And I think that's something that will continue to develop, which is the ability to still reach your audiences, even though they're not fully connected. So they still feel part of that experience, even though there isn't that 4 or 5G connection. This is literally taking advertising to the last mile, right? Mm -hmm. having them, uh, even if they're not connected, but you can still give them that last piece of what they want and the experience that they're looking for. Exactly right. So where do the broadcasters fit in all this? I mean, you mentioned now that people are going to different places, so where, that, where the advertisers should be. Mm -hmm. It could be social media, it could be on the street. Um, obviously that has impact on the broadcasters themselves. So how are they using data analytics in this current landscape? Hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest ways is uh, just being able to have those stats in front of them in real time, right? A good example is, you know, if you watch the NFL, they talk about next-gen analytics. Um, that's analytics from coming from these teams that they're watching coming in real time and they actually use uh, Amazon QuickSight for that to really see a lot of the trends, et cetera, and a lot of numbers that they're, they're spitting out in, in uh, the broadcast is actually happening in real time, right? It's being produced to them in real time in such a consumable format that they're able to provide that out to the consumer as well as watching to get that real time info. And to your point, since that info is real time, the coaches can make on the fly decisions that are more higher quality or higher quality than just, you know, their eyes on the field. They can actually combine their intuitive knowledge and experience with the stats that are coming up on their dashboard to make the best decision possible during that moment in the game. Yeah, that's right. But sometimes the, the data that broadcasters yeah. are using wouldn't be to influence you know, what's happening on the field, but <coughs> broadcasters are being influenced by the way in which um, sports is being monetized to what we call over-the-top um, platforms. So a really good example is DAZN. Um, DAZN um, broadcasts or rebroadcasts um, sports content that is originally owned by one of the major four broadcasters in the country. But these broadcasters, these incumbent broadcasters, they still need to you know, be part of that economy. They can't be threatened by DAZN. So what they need to do is, is that they need to use the data that they are collecting on QuickSight and then find a way to monetize that. And that then brings into the concept of clean rooms. How do you share and collaborate data with what you would see to be a competitor, 
at the end of the day, a competitor, if they buy the rights for that sport off you, they're also part of that journey as well. So how do you incentivize them so that way they don't feel as though they are a competitive threat? And I think this has been um, pr- predominant in the last five years. One of the major trends is, is that no longer is sports part of you know a community of just four or five broadcasters that you're watching on TV. It's everywhere. So it, instead of cannibalizing each other, we're actually expanding the revenue pie by looking for new ways to monetize uh, based on those analytics by delighting the consumer in new ways. And then everybody in that in the ecosystem could find a way to become more profitable. Exactly right. And that always comes down to the concept of working backwards yeah. from the fan experience, working backwards from the customer. And the one thing that sports does really well is understand that experience because it's been there for the last 100, 150 years throughout the broadcasting lifetime of sports. But how does the new trends in the fan experience then make it easy for people to share in that slice of the pie. And that's something that we're still going through that journey on. Yeah. But Amazon Web Services is one of those uh, hyperscalers that has had that history of working with these partners, understanding those trends ahead of time. Um, and, and I think that's something that uh, we can definitely help out with um, for customers that are looking to go through that journey, particularly in the sports community um, that they're working in. So you mentioned AWS and the learnings and insights that you know they've gained from working with other uh, organizations in the sport ecosystem. If we have a particular sports league or a broadcaster or advertiser in the sports space, how could AWS help them? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have those experts within AWS that has uh, done these things either at these organizations or just have been in the industry for a good amount of time to really help uh, these teams and leagues understand how they can implement that. Um, you know, we have partnerships with like the NFL and, and PGA um, and utilizing some of these services. You know, we mentioned like the next gen and you know, if you watch the NFL, I mean, you've seen that it's been powered by AWS um, as well as some of the things that the PGA is doing. So that's just one of the ways that you know, we can help. There. And I think it's really important that, you know, Amazon Web Services has um, a width and breadth of all the technology services to help out with solving end to end use cases. So whether or not it's streaming the video data with um, AWS Elemental or with our Kinesis real-time streaming services or providing that edge computing services that we have with um, IoT um, or actually getting to that last mile, delivering the insight to the fans or to the coaches with QuickSight. Our expert solutions architects that are you know, working in the domain of sports and entertainment can help out with our customers to accelerate their journey. Great. So... I mean, this is a topic close to all of our hearts one way or another, whether we're a fan or an athlete or an aspiring athlete, sports uh, touches us all. So I think making sports better as a whole is better for all of us. And uh, it's kind of close to home. So it's been a really fun episode. Thank you for providing these insights and thanks for flying in. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thank you.